I welcome you all to the session of Thermal Engineering Basic and Applied. Today, we shall discuss about the basic differences between SI and CI engines and then we shall discuss about the compression ratio that is an important term used to uh, in the context of the operation of the internal con combustion engines. So, before coming to the discussion of the comparison of SI and CI engines, I would like to recall the differences between two stroke and four stroke engines that we have discussed in the last class. Now, if we write the two stroke and four stroke engine, two stroke and four stroke engine. So, what we have seen that for four stroke vis a vis two stroke for the four stroke cycle engines whether it is SI engine or CI engine we could identify that if I write here two revolution of the crank per cycle, while for the two stroke engine there is one revolution of the crank per cycle. Right. So, whether the engine is SI engine or CI engine for both SI and CI engines, if the engine is four stroke cycle engine, then we have discussed per cycle, we could identify two revolution of the crank, while for the two stroke cycle engine only one revolution of the crank per cycle. Now, I am coming to this particular point. Since one revolution of the crank per cycle, and we have seen that there is one power stroke in a two st stroke engine, one power stroke vis a vis one ideal stroke. So, one power stroke per revolution and one revolution per cycle. So, that means in a cycle, one power stroke is there while if we try to recall for if we if we discuss if we, if we consider four stroke cycle engines two revolution of the crank and we have seen that out of these four different strokes one is the power stroke remaining three strokes are the ideal strokes so in there is uh, i mean for two revolution only one power stroke so engine is getting enough time for the you know to get to get cool down, but you know for the two stroke cycle engine one power stroke occurs on one revolution. of the crank. That means, per revolution one power stroke, theoretically one revolution half power stroke. So, basically 
one power stroke for two revolution, one power stroke for one revolution. That means, the rate of occurrence of power stroke and consequently the power output theoretically appears to be double for the two stroke cycle engines as compared to that of the four stroke cycle engines. So, let me write here the rate of occurrence of power stroke and consequently power output theoretically appears to be double. So, this statement what I have written over here this is valid if we compare with four stroke cycle engines. So, this is as compared to that of the four stroke cycle engines. It is because of this reason because we know that power stroke is the stroke during which pressure and temperature inside the cylinder pressure and temperature of the working substance inside the cylinder is very very high and it is because of this reason you know several parts I mean several parts of engine or engine cylinder may prone to mechanical failure due to thermal stress and accounting for this aspect speed of the two stroke cycle engines is reduced. So, let me tell you once again since the rate of occurrence of power stroke that means, the power output which we have discussed now seems to be theoretically double as compared to that of the four stroke cycle engines and it is because of this reason speed of the two stroke cycle engines is reduced. Otherwise, excessive rise in temperature may lead to the failure of several mechanical components owing to the thermal stress generation or development. But let me tell you why I am discussing this particular point because this is the most important and fundamental difference between the four stroke cycle and two stroke cycle engines. This is one important aspect that speed needs to be reduced. Also we have seen that for the two stroke cycle engines significant portion of the fresh charge that is the fuel air mixture if it is SI engine or the uh, fuel for the CI engine will be lost because the you know intake and exhaust these two strokes occur simultaneously. So, when fresh charge is drawn into the cylinder by a suitable pressurizing system the incoming fresh charge allows combustion products to go out from the cylinder. Now, that simultaneous you know intake and exhaust stroke leads to a loss a loss of some fuel. So, we cannot eliminate that particular aspect. So, though speed of the two stroke engine so, basically we have seen that the speed of two stroke cycle engines needs to be reduced needs to be you know uh, uh, reduced because otherwise excessive rise in temperature may lead to the failure of several mechanical components. On the other hand 
large amount of fuel loss will be there due to the two stroke two different stroke we have that, that part we have discussed in the last class the simultaneous you know intake and exhaust strokes so incoming fresh charge is allowing combustion products to leave, to go out so that particular process will result in a significant loss of the fuel with the combustion uh, products or combustion gases on the other hand though there is only one power stroke vis a vis three ideal strokes, yet the greater asset of the four stroke cycle engine is the fuel economy. So, that is very important part. So, for this particular class of engines, four stroke cycle engines, let me write over here that is greater asset is the fuel economy right. So, you know that uh, four stroke cycle engines we are getting only one power stroke. So, the power output theoretically lesser as compared to that of the two stroke engine that is that is there, but the greater asset is the fuel economy because the loss of fresh fuel that is inducted into the cylinder during intake stroke through you know uh, charge if it is SI engine I mean the loss can be prevented. So, that is why uh, two stroke cycle SI engines are not are not recommended. So, it is because of the loss of significant amount of fuel two stroke cycle SI engines are not recommended ok. So, with this discussion because this is very important point I wanted to discuss today. Next we shall discuss about the differences between SI and CI engines. So, you know that four stroke vis a vis two stroke this classification is based on the number of strokes, while this classification of internal combustion engine is based on the types of combustion. So, this classification is that we have discussed. So, this is based on the types of combustion. Okay. So, if we now discuss about I mean if we discuss the difference between SI and CI engines. Uh, so, if I write this is SI engines and then this is CI engine. Okay. So, if we discuss now. So, while we are trying to you know find out the difference between SI and CI engines, let me tell you if we try to recall internal combustion engine nomenclature. That time we have discussed that except two parts those are the spark plug and carburetor other parts are same for both SI and CI engines. That means, for the SI engine we have seen that there is 
a spark plug that is used to initiate spark for the combustion and another component is the carburetor that is provided to supply homogeneous mixture of fuel and air. The same nomenclature can be used for the CI engine provided carburetor is removed and spark plug instead of spark plug there will be a fuel nozzle. So, from that particular you know point if we discuss the difference differences between SI and CI engines we must say that SI both SI and CI engines have much in common, but still there are a few fundamental differences and those differences make the operation of both SI engine and CI engine to be different. So, while we are trying to figure out the fundamental differences, we need to find out a few common you know point basis. So, the first basis point is the basic cycle. Basic cycle you know that uh, just if we try to uh, you know draw over here say we have So, this is top dead center, this is bottom dead center and we have one spark plug. So, this is intake manifold, this is spark plug, this is exhaust manifold. What we have seen that during intake stroke T piston is coming from T D C to B D C, fresh air is coming through intake manifold into the cylinder. Next stroke is if we consider four stroke cycle engine, next stroke is piston is again travelling back from B D C to T D C, both the valves are closed and the inducted phase charge is now getting compressed. Towards the end of the compression stroke, if we switch on the spark plug, spark will be initiated and that spark will help to ignite the compressed charge combustion will be completed and because of the combustion high pressure and high temperature the state thermodynamic state inside the cylinder is the high pressure and high temperature of the working substance that is there. That will create a thrust on the piston face and piston will again travel back from T D C to B D C and that is the power stroke and since the movement of the piston is spontaneous because the amount of power that we are getting during power stroke will remain stored in the flywheel because this is crank and this is connecting rod. So, that uh, crank will be rotating and that crank shaft the flywheel is connected to the crank shaft and that crank shaft will again borrow energy from the flywheel for the movement of the piston between T D C and B D C during three different ideal strokes. Now, question is what we need to do? if we need to know the if we need to estimate the efficiency of the internal combustion engine how much power is being produced or how much power is getting uh, how much power is available at the crank shaft to know that we need to know the you know uh, change in pressure volume and other thermodynamic properties right so a question is so that means to map the functioning of 
a four stroke cycle engine whether it is SI or CI engine we need to know the we need to map all the processes in different thermodynamic planes. That means, we have understood that intake, compression, power and exhaust. So, these strokes will be this four strokes will occur in a cyclic manner. So, that means, all the processes if we can map in a thermodynamic plane or thermodynamic planes, then perhaps we can represent the cyclic, uh, we can represent the cyclic processes, we can represent the cycle to be precise. So, in other word, we need to know, we need to know a particular cycle which will you know allow or which will map all the processes in different thermodynamic planes or ordinate diagram. So, the basic cycle for analyzing the performance of SI engine is the auto cycle. So, I am writing over here that is the auto cycle. See the name auto is coming because a German inventor Nicholas Otto who invented this and the the uh, he is credited Nicholas Otto is credited as the first creator of the operation of four stroke cycle SI engines using one particular cycle and that cycle is auto cycle. So, this is analyzed the basic cycle is auto cycle which is used to describe the functioning of SI engines. Okay. So, this is very important. The German inventor Nicholas Otto, who is the German inventor, who first introduced or who first described all the processes or functioning of four stroke cycle SI engine using this cycle and that is why it is auto cycle. The basic cycle for the CI engine is diesel cycle. Again let me tell you if this is the schematic for a CI engine then the spark plug should not be there instead of spark plug a fuel nozzle will be there. And if we need to describe the functioning of the four stroke cycle CI engine, we need to map all the processes in several thermodynamic planes and German inventor or mechanical engineer Rudolf Diesel who first described the functioning of CI engine using a cycle and that cycle is known diesel cycle. So, Rudolf Diesel German inventor, he was a mechanical engineer. Okay. So, diesel cycle is used to describe functioning of four stroke cycle uh, CI engines four stroke cycle 
سی آئی انجنز اوکے سو دس از دا فنڈامنٹل ڈیفرنس بیسڈ آن دی بیس آئی مین وین دا بیسس از دی بیسک سائیکل نیکسٹ از اگین لیٹ می رائٹ دس از ایس آئی انجن and this is C i engine so next is the basis on which we can differentiate the operation of C i and S i engines next is the introduction of fuel. See, for the SI engines, we have seen that carburetor is there. So, carburetor carburetor is provided to supply. homogeneous mixture of air and fuel. So, this is what is there while for the C i engines as I said that instead of spark plug we will have fuel nozzle. So, fuel is introduced in the cylinder by using a fuel nozzle, while air is drawn into the cylinder. through intake manifold right. So, this is the difference between S i and C i engines when the basis is the introduction of fuel. So, we are trying to figure out the fundamental differences next is you know the ignition system. So, if we go to the next slide, next is so this is S i engines and this is C i engines right. So, if we write next is the ignition system. See for the S i engine, we know that spark plug is there. So, spark is initiated by the spark plug and that spark you know initiate combustion while for the C i engines we have discussed that the pressure and temperature at the end of the compression stroke. Pressure and temperature of what? pressure and temperature of the, the air because air is drawn into the cylinder through intake manifold that air is compressed and at the end of the compression stroke thermodynamic state of the compressed uh, compressed air is such that when fuel is spread into the compressed air that thermodynamic state allows fuel to ignite. So, that is called auto ignition. So, here we can write that spark plug is used spark plug is used to ignite the charge so charge is fuel plus air mixture okay charge or fuel air mixture spark plug is used while for the C i engine 
utilizes the high pressure and temperature of the compressed air that is at the end of the compression stroke. Utilizes the high pressure and temperature of or let me write utilizes high pressure and high temperature of the compressed air to ignite the fuel when spread into the cylinder by a fuel nozzle. So, when fuel is spread into the cylinder because cylinder is having compressed air. So, essentially fuel is spread into the compressed air by a fuel nozzle and CI engines utilizes CI engine utilizes high pressure and high temperature of compressed air to auto ignite the fuel. So, that is the fundamental difference between SI and CI engines when the basis is the basis common basis for this particular comparison is the ignition system. Then is the compression ratio. So, next basis is compression ratio. SI engines, SI engines are having relatively low compression ratio. So, the shear compression ratio if I write if I write here compression ratio that is C r C r is 5 to 10.5 while C i engines are having higher compression ratio. And C r is 10 to 22, C r compression ratio varies from 10 to 22. Last common basis for this comparison is, so if I write S i in in and C i in in. So, the last basis is the weight of the engine. CI engines weight of SI engines is low while weight of the CI engines is very high. Now, so this five base you know if we try to go back to the slide. So, we had 
started discussing about the fundamental differences between SI and CI engines, right. We had identified five common bases. One is the basic cycle, another is the introduction of fuel, third one is the ignition system, fourth is the compression ratio and last you know common basis for this comparison is the weight of the engine. Now, the last point weight of the SI engine is low while weight of the CI engines is very high. So, you know if we go back to the previous slide wherein we have you know written the difference based on the compression ratio, SI engines are having relatively low compression ratio 5 to 10.5 while CI engines are having high 10 to 22. So, you can see if we now look at carefully the last two points low compression ratio low weight high compression ratio for CI engines high weight that means weight of the engines this particular point is directly related. So, the difference between CI and SI, SI and CI engines based on the weight or on the basis of the weight which is which can be you know directly related to the compression ratio. So, to you know uh, we shall discuss about this what is compression ratio because we have seen that these two points are interrelated. So, now let us quickly discuss about what is compression ratio. So, uh, I am writing here compression ratio. that is here. So, if we try to draw the engine cylinder say so these two points are the this is top dead center and this is bottom dead center ok. And so, uh, this is intake this is exhaust ok. So, if we now try to see the so this is volume V and this is pressure. So, if we try to draw the change in pressure volume when piston is so this is this is bottom dead center and this is top dead center say 1. So, when this is the configuration when piston is at B D C say this is V this is V B D C and this is the volume say this is the pressure. So, this is the base pressure. So, when piston is coming from B D C to T D C both valves are closed in the compression stroke volume will reduced. So, you know when piston is at B D C that is in the beginning of compression stroke enter you know uh, uh, this uh, cylinder passes is cylinder space is filled with fresh charge both valves are closed piston is travelling back from B D C to T D C volume will reduce pressure will increase. So, now if we say this is the point and this is the so this is V T D C 1 and pressure will increase. So, this is the change in pressure 
So, you can see that as piston travels from BDC to TDC during compression stroke, volume reduces definitely volume of the compressed charge, volume of the charge will reduce, pressure will increase. Here you know that if we write here, this volume so, this is the volume. So, you know this length particular length if we now look at this two dimensional schematic this length over which piston is having to and fro movement is known as stroke length and the volume in three dimensional space is the swept volume V s. So, if we now look at the two dimensional schematic we can see only the length and that is the th this is the length over which piston is having Reciproc reciprocating movement and that length is stroke length. In three dimensional space it is the volume and that volume is stroke volume V s, while the volume between the top dead center and the cylinder head. So, this is cylinder head. Is the known as clearance volume. So, that is this is the clearance space. So, when we are trying to compress the fresh charge if it is SI engine or compress the compress you know only air for the CI engines the compressed charge or compressed air will occupy this space that is the that is known as clearance space. So, this is the volume between top dead center and cylinder head compression ratio is defined compression ratio is defined as the ratio of total volume by the clearance volume. So, that means, C r equal to V c plus V s divided by V c that is 1 plus V s by V c. So, the total volume is V s plus V c, clearance volume is V c and this is 1 plus V s upon V c. Now, let us consider another case, case is say this is another configuration and this configuration. So, this is T D C 2. So, this is another configuration where T D C is here. So, what you can see from this schematic depiction is that we are trying to reduce V c, we are allowing stroke length or the stroke volume. So, if the con if we consider configuration 2 B d c is remaining same. So, that means, we are increasing V s that is the stroke volume, but the clearance volume is getting reduced. So, if we now look at what we can see I mean just if we plot. So, if this is V T D C 2, then we can see volume will reduced during the compression stroke definitely. So, pressure will increase further. So, now if we consider that configuration 1 for S i engine and configuration 2 for C i engines. what we can see. So, that means, V c is for configuration 2 V c is less when V c is less shear will be high will be higher right. So, higher compression ratio. So, to have higher compression ratio we need to reduce V c and that is the configuration 2 that is for the C i engine. So, for the C i engine what we can see may be we are compressing to the extent. So, we are we are trying to compress the you know fresh air up to V T D C 2 and increase in pressure. So, basically now it was so this this particular pressure is say P 2 and this particular pressure was P 1. So, you can see P 2 is greater than P 1. So, the pressure at the end of the compression stroke will be definitely higher for configuration 2 that is 
the C i mean we have considered over here because compression ratio will be high. So, if we increase the compression ratio what we can see V c must be reduced the consequence is that pressure will increase and that high pressure will allow fuel to auto ignite the moment when it is spread in, into the cylinder by a fuel nozzle. Now, question is that is what we have understood, but issue is if the compression ratio is high then we have seen that the weight is also weight is also very high. Why? Because you know that pressure for the higher compression ratio pressure developed inside the cylinder is very high. So, to withstand that pressure basically that time both valves are closed and engine cylinder is acting like a pressure vessel. So, to withstand that high pressure cylinder will be thicker to be precise wall of the cylinder will be thicker and weight will automatically increase. So, that is why if compression ratio increases weight also will increase that is what we had written earlier. So, to summarize today's discussion we have tried to discuss about the most important you know difference between four stroke and two stroke cycle engines. Afterward we have discussed about the fundamental differences between C i and S i engines and finally, we have introduced one important terminology that is compression ratio we have defined and then we have discussed the consequence of the higher compression ratio in the context of internal combustion engine. With this I stop here today we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.